Ah, buenos dias. My siestas are getting shorter and shorter. I'm David Gansel, and welcome to Armchair Imagineering. Mystery Science Theater 3000 is the greatest television program of all time, but it's also a really niche television program. And while the recent revival has led to a lot more merch than the show used to have, it's still all the type of merch that's relatively inexpensive to produce and mass market. What I'm saying is, Mystery Science Theater 3000 is not the type of show that they usually adapt into theme park rides. But they should! And now that MC 2 k is a Netflix show, and another Netflix show got a temporary theme park attraction, I gotta say, a Mystery Science Theater ride is not quite as far outside the realm of possibility as it was even a few years ago. And believe me, I have spent a lot of time thinking about what a Mystery Science ride should be. The way I always imagined the ride is that you would enter through either Gizmonic Institute or Castle Forester, but if they were making the ride now, it would probably be through Moon 13, and that's fine, I can work with that. In the queue, you'd move through a recreation of whichever version of the Mads Lair the ride was using, as TV screens would feature new footage of the Mads, inviting you to take part in their newest experiment. An experiment called Mystery Science Theater 3000 The Ride. The Mads in question, whether it's Clayton and Frank, or Pearl Bobo and Brain Guy, or Kinga and Max, would boast about their new technology having brought the worst movies of all time to life. And now they're putting you inside the movies. Having you ride the movies, if you will. And of course, much like The Simpsons Ride, between these new clips laying out the backstory, we'd also have classic clips of the show, both host segments and shorts. In the final pre-boarding area, you get on an elevator that's decorated to be a rocket flying you to the satellite of love. There's one last video pre-show as the Mads prepare you for the experiment, but suddenly the feed is hacked, a la the Terminator 2 3D pre-show, by one of their previous test subjects. So either Joel, Mike, or Jonah, or ideally a randomized selection from the three. The previous test subject tells you that they can help you escape the Mads' clutches in just a little bit, but in the meantime, they've left their robot friends on the ship to help you. And if you want to remain safe until your rescue, you should keep your hands and arms inside the vehicle at all times. People with certain health conditions should just escape now, etc, etc. You disembark from your rocket elevator, board the ride vehicles, and ascend the lift hill, which is, of course, the doorway sequence from the show. Then when you're at the top of the hill, a little hatch slides open at the front of the vehicle, and up rises an animatronic crow and servo. Think the E.T. adventure mixed with Rex from Star Tours. Crow and Servo introduce themselves, and you ride the ride. Basically, it's the great movie ride, but instead of a human host explaining recreations of the greatest scenes in cinema history, it's two robot hosts making fun of recreations of the worst scenes in cinema history. Oh yes, one room would have an animatronic Torgo there just sort of wobbling. Oh yes, one room would have a giant creeping terror just slothing around. Oh yes, there'd be a big crawling eye. Oh yes, one room would have Gamera swinging on the pole, just always swinging, always swinging. But of course the real selling point of the ride is the jokes that Crow and Servo make in front of you. Because they would be different each time. Well, okay, maybe not every single time, but there would be a large selection of jokes to rotate through. Each room would have over a dozen wisecracks that Crow and Servo can make at the expense of the ride, and each time you ride through, you never know which jokes you're gonna hear. In fact, maybe some of the rooms wouldn't have animatronics, but they'd have screens playing actual footage from some of these bad movies, adding an extra randomization element. One time you ride, the screen may be displaying the Shine Your Love scene from Angel's Revenge. Another time it might be playing the band who played California Lady. And within each of these random scenes, there'd be further randomization of the jokes you could hear during these scenes. We're taking rewrite ability to the max. I don't mean that max, but you know what I mean. Then as the ride continues, eventually the Mads appear on another screen and tell you that they're shutting down the experiment and you're all doomed. But an animatronic gypsy comes in and tells you that your escape is all ready. So you turn a corner and the drop at the end has you plummeting down the umbilicus returning safely to Earth. You exit the ride vehicle to the Gizmonic gift shop, get your ride photos at Cambot's corner, and get right back in line to find out what jokes you're gonna hear next time. The real selling point of building this ride is the only really expensive part would be the animatronic crow and servo on each ride vehicle, because all of the other animatronics could be spirit Halloween level. 
Honestly, the cheaper the better, because you're going for the aesthetic of a crappy old movie you'd see on MST3K, which is basically the aesthetic of a crumbling old carnival ride. And it could easily be updated every couple of years with new jokes. Just get Hampton and Baron back in the booth to say a few new quips and then slide them into the existing infrastructure. It's a ride that's relatively easy to maintain and keep fresh. The downside of building this is, I honestly don't think there's a park out there that's willing to spend the money to license this particular brand. But if I'm wrong, and there is a park out there that does want to build this, I hereby rescind the rights to this idea to you and to Shout Factory and Best Brains. I don't care about money, you don't have to pay me for this idea, I just want you to build it so I can ride this thing. So what about you? What are some of your favorite movies and TV shows that you wish had a broad enough appeal to get their own rides, and what sort of rides would you like to see for them? Let's talk about this all in the comments, and until next time, this is Dave, signing off.